Coming up on today's Airborne, the FAA cuts paperwork for ADSB approval. Sikorsky Aircraft will develop an autonomous Black Hawk for cargo missions. And the FAA will expedite limited commercial operation of unmanned aerial systems. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. The FAA Flight Standard Service has created a new and more efficient operations authorization procedure for U.S. registered aircraft to comply with early ADSB directives mandated by other countries. The new approval process is expected to be available to operators at the end of June 2014. The new authorization procedure is in response to the growing number of international civil aviation organization member states that are requiring ADSB state of registry approvals for operations above flight level 290. The FAA's decision to adopt the new authorization procedure has cut the length of application from 200 to 20 pages, thereby reducing the burden on the operator and decreasing the time period to process applications. ADSB does not become mandatory in the U.S. until 2020, but the MBAA notes that early compliance to meet the ICAO state of registry requirements will satisfy the U.S. ADSB mandate as well. According to MBAA Operations Project Manager Brian Coaster, there are more operators than ever traveling internationally, and the simplified process will, quote, be a huge relief for those trying to operate in other parts of the world, end quote. During a speech at AUVSI's Unmanned Systems 2014, FAA manager of UAS Integration Jim Williams on Tuesday announced that the FAA is working with several industries to expedite some limited commercial operations of UAS before UAS rules are finalized. AUVSI President and CEO Michael Toscano said, quote, We applaud the FAA for working collaboratively with the industry and other stakeholders to help UAS technology begin to take off. Limited commercial operations is a good first step, but we also need to begin the small UAS rulemaking immediately, end quote. Toscano emphasized the positive economic impact of allowing commercial UAS use and the negative impact of impairing it. Specifically, Williams said the FAA is expected to allow limited commercial operations for filmmaking, power line inspection, precision agriculture, and flare stack inspection. Williams said these industries approached the FAA for expedited approvals. AUVSI and more than 30 organizations called on the FAA to allow for limited operations immediately under its authority granted by Congress. You're watching Airborne. We'll be back after these messages with more news and our feature of the day. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Welcome back. If you'd like to suggest a story for Airborne, Aero TV, our website, or our podcast, drop an email to news-spy at aero-news.net. Sikorsky Aircraft announced Tuesday from AUVSI Unmanned Systems Conference that it will develop its first product to feature matrix technology. By converting a retired UH-60A Black Hawk helicopter into an optionally piloted variant capable of a wide spectrum of missions. The autonomous Black Hawk helicopter will offer the flexibility of internal and external cargo capabilities, the strength to lift up to 9,000 pounds, and the productivity of high cruise speeds. The design is targeting a system loss rate of 1 per 100,000 flight hours. As reported earlier on ANN, Sikorsky successfully demonstrated the ability of a UH-60M upgrade optionally piloted Black Hawk helicopter to conduct autonomous flight 
and autonomous cargo resupply demonstrations earlier this year. Mark Miller, vice president of research and engineering, said, quote, the autonomous Blackhawk will provide affordable, reliable, high-speed resupply to the warfighter in the harshest conditions at a cost per ton mile that competes with ground convoys, end quote. It's Friday at last and time for our weekly barnstorming commentary. This week, Jim's going to explain why he thinks the UAV industry has the potential to be the savior of general aviation. Here's this week's barnstorming. Thanks, Ashley, and hi, folks. Well, we had an interesting week this week. It's the AUVSI convention which stands for Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. Basically what it is, is it's a UAV convention. Now, held in the Orlando Convention Center, wall to wall, were some of the most intriguing technology I've ever seen. But even more important, what I saw was something we hadn't seen in quite a while. A very healthy, very innovative, and apparently very profitable aviation industry. Mind you, it's not the aviation industry you and I both know and love mostly, but hey, it's a start. There's no question that the UAV industry is exploding. There's no question that there's a tremendous amount of technology and innovation coming to the fore. But the big problem for the UAV industry is what will the FAA do next? And while they've indicated they may lighten up in one or another areas, especially for commercial prospects, there's no question that the FAA so far is ill-equipped and at this point ill-advised in how they're dealing with the UAV industry. Let me also bring something up here that just wasn't lost on myself and everybody associated with Aero News who was at this thing. There was some tremendous technology here. We saw new engines. We saw new airframes. We saw all kinds of avionics. We saw all kinds of associated technologies. There was some really exciting stuff here. In many cases, a lot of this could trickle up or trickle down in some cases to general aviation and sport aviation. And in fact, a couple of the manufacturers already announced intentions. We saw extraordinary stuff. Everything from a very interesting little passive variable speed prop that's built for UAVs and may wind up on LSAs in the not too distant future, on up to avionics technologies that could provide the ultimate quote unquote, take me home button. Think about the general aviation pilot in the future who gets himself into trouble, isn't quite ready to resort to a parachute if they have one, but simply hits the button. The airframe looks around, avoids weather, avoids terrain, takes it to a runway that's suitable for that type of aircraft, lines it up, puts it over the runway, and starts retarding power at the point of touchdown. The technology is not in our future. It exists now. It's a matter of adaptation. These are the things we can use. And yeah, I know real pilots don't need that kind of stuff. I hear you guys, but the fact of the matter is it can't hurt. Just like the parachutes that we've been talking about for years and years and years that have now saved so many lives. When Alan Klapmeyer decided to put one on an airframe, little did he know, years later, there'd be dozens and dozens and dozens of people who could look to Alan and say, thank you for my life. Well, these are the kind of things, these are the kind of technologies that change aviation for the better. And while aviation needs a whole lot of help, some of the things we saw at AUVSI could provide quite the start. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. A Cirrus SR-22, powered by an engineered propulsion system, Grothlight V8 diesel engine, made its first test flight May 2nd in Mojave, California with Dick Rattan at the controls of the airplane. According to the EPS blog, Rattan flew the airplane up to 5,000 feet for a 20-minute test regimen. The flight marked the beginning of the engine's lengthy flight test program. It's planned to meet the FAA requirements that will allow the Cirrus to make its maiden voyage to EAA AirVenture Oshkosh this summer, where the Grothlight V8 will make its formal debut. EPS says that at the end of the test phase, it will have proven definitively that the fuel savings recorded in over 500 hours of ground testing is equivalent or greater in actual flight. The team will also have a better perspective on engine wear and maintenance requirements. Their website claims a projected TBO of 3,000 hours. You're watching Airborne. We'll be right back after these messages. ADS-B will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-B today. 
with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-B out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer, get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. Danbury Aerospace has established a new business unit that has taken over all experimental and LSA engine assembly for ECI. The new Titan engine company has been in the works for the past few months, according to a message posted online by Kevin Eldridge, who is the head of business development for Titan Engines. Eldridge says the new focus on the experimental market is a huge shift for the organization and has given them, quote, tremendous freedom to bring new products and services to this market without the restrictions of the certified engine market, end quote. Eldred's also added, quote, while our new autonomy gives us freedom, our relationship with the other four business units of Danbury gives us unmatched access to resources and services. Titan claims they currently have over 1,660 of their engines flying in experimental aircraft around the world. A compact UAV controlled by your smartphone and safe for indoor use is coming soon, according to Parrot, which is becoming established in the small UAV market. On its website, Parrot says the Bebop drone quadcopter will allow users to take aerial video and pictures like a pro using the built-in 14 megapixel HD camera system that's digitally stabilized on three axes. The aircraft is controlled through a Wi-Fi connection weighs only 14 ounces, and is compatible with iOS and Android smartphones and tablets. Parrot says the Bebop drone is built with safety in mind. The four rotor blades will stop automatically in the event of a shock to the aircraft, and it has an emergency mode for immediate landing. A return home function brings the Bebop drone back to its takeoff point. Well, that's our program. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories at aero-news.net. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new edition of Airborne. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.